Ezekiel chapter 47 and verse 1. It says this, Then he brought me back to the door of the temple. This is Ezekiel being brought back by what is considered an angel. And there was water flowing from under the threshold of the temple towards the east. For the front of the temple faced east and the water was flowing from under the right side of the temple, south of the temple. He brought me out by the way of the north gate and led me around on the outside to the outer gate that faces east. And there was water running out on the right side. Then, and when this man went out to the east with a line in his hand, he measured a thousand cubits and he brought me through the waters and the waters came up to my ankles. Again, he measured 1,000 and brought me through the waters and the waters came up to my knees. Again, he measured a thousand and brought me through the water and the water came up to my waist. Again, he measured 1,000 and it was a river that I could not cross for the water was too deep water in which one must swim a river that could not be crossed and he said to me son of man have you seen this then he brought me and returned me to the bank of the river when i returned there along the bank of the river there were many trees on one side and the other and then he said to me this water flows towards the eastern region going down into the valley and enters into the sea. And when it reaches the sea, the waters are healed. The waters of the sea are healed. And it shall be, note this verse 9, every living thing that moves, wherever the rivers go, will live. There will be very great multitude of fish. Why? Because these waters go there. For they will be healed. Let's all read the last phrase together. Everybody wants to go. Everything, let's read, everything will live wherever the river goes. Again, everything will live wherever the river goes. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for wisdom. Thank you for utterance. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for ushering us into your presence. As we feast on your word. As I open our eyes to see, open the eyes of our understanding to see. As the scriptures are open, let our understanding be opened to see what it is you want us to see. We are grateful. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name, amen. You can sit down. Turn to your neighbor and say, wherever the river goes, there will be life. Uh, permit me for the for sake of time to skip through the players and trees. Usually I'll tell a story here and then make you laugh and then preach, right? So if you don't mind, let's just all laugh together one to go. <laughs> Check. <laughs> Everything that God does in the community begins in the church. Everything that God wants to do in the community begins in the church. Ezekiel chapter 47, we see that the water that is flowing into the community towards the eastern region is starting in the temple. What is water in the temple? It's a river in the community. Guess where this water in the temple comes from? Because that picture there, that is a wonderful imagery. That imagery there is the temple for us, is the church. So the, when God wants to do something in the community, what does he do? He introduces a church into the scene. He introduces a church into the scene. And the water that is in the church becomes a river in the community. The water that is in the church flows out of the church and becomes a river in the community. Guess where the water comes from? John chapter 4, Jesus has this conversation with this woman, and he tells this woman, I know you come to the well, and whoever drinks this water from the well will thirst again. And he goes on to say in verse 14, but whoever drinks the water that he, Jesus, gives will never thirst again, for that water will become in him a spring of water welling up, flowing, bubbling continually within him unto eternal life. So Jesus is saying, the water that I give, when you have an encounter with me, it becomes a well. So the drink, the water you drink from Jesus becomes a well on your inside. That's where we get the name of our church, the well church. But it goes on to say in John chapter 7, at the end of the feast, 
The Bible says in verse 37, Jesus stood and cried out with a, a loud voice saying, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. And whoever believes in me, as the scripture had said, out of his heart, some translations say, out of his belly will flow rivers of living water. This is he spoke about concerning the spirit. So I come to Jesus, I take a drink of Jesus, that drink of Jesus becomes a well springing up to eternal life on the inside of me. And this well is not meant to just remain a well on the inside of me, it's supposed to become a river outside of me. That's why our church is called the well, and that's why our mission statement is, number one, inviting you to encounter God. John chapter 4, you're thirsty, drink from God. Your life is jacked up, come to Jesus. You need some peace, come to Jesus. You're thir- whatever you're going through, encounter God. That's what our mission statement says, inviting you to encounter God. John chapter 4, for an overflowing life in Jesus, John chapter 7. That means whatever you got from your encounter with God is supposed to go beyond you. The well is not supposed to remain dormant on the inside of you. So I get a drink from Jesus. It becomes a well in me and that well becomes a river outside of me. Turn to your neighbor and say it's not supposed to remain in you. Say it with conviction. It's supposed to flow out of you. So here are three points that are going to just help us capture some truths from this imagery in Ezekiel 47. Number one, we must stay connected to the community. We must stay connected to the community. The river that was flowing from the temple, the river that was flowing from the church, connected it to the community. The community will die off if it loses connection to the church. I'll say it again. I am bold enough to say any community that mutes, any community that disconnects itself from the church is going to dry because the water that brings life to the community flows from the church. The water that brings life in your office flows from you. The water that brings life in your family flows from you. It's not enough to have a well. Uh, God gave you the well so that there can be a river for those around you to drink in. So we must stay connected to the church, to the community. This church, the well church, is going to consistently send out rivers into the community. How are we going to do that? Every Saturday morning by 5.30 a.m. we pray. Next year is going to be open for those who want to pray. But our leaders, worship team, prayer team, have been praying every Saturday, not for the well church, but for our community. For our community, praying that there should be revival in families, in individuals. We're sending out streams every time, every time we pray, every time we serve. Whether it's in Twinbrook Elementary, Veers Mill Elementary, whether it's with Interfaith, whether it's through a food truck, whether it's the unhoused community, we are sending out rivers. Those are rivers that are are moving from the church to the community. Every Sunday we meet in this space, this becomes a river that the community can drink from. That's why we must take advantage of our time in a school until we are boxed into a church. And then we become part of a stereotype. So we have to maximize this time and invite people back to the same schools that their kids come to. Invite students back to the same school that they come on Monday through Friday. That's, an, that's, that's a river. And even when we're online, that's why we invest thousands of dollars to make sure your online experience is, is good. Why? It's literally called a stream. It's called a stream. That flows from here. So God has called us to move about. Even Jesus, when he was here, there was no internet, there was no Wi-Fi. So he had to do it with his feet. Acts chapter 10 verse 38 says, And we know how that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. And Jesus went around doing good. He went around by himself. The disciples were not omitted from this. Acts chapter 8 talks about them scattering. They scattered and Philip went down to Samaria. Our great commission in Mark chapter 16 verse 15 says what? Go into all the world. It did not say stay in the church. It said go into all the world. This church is going to reach people in the community. How does that apply to you personally? You have to keep looking for ways to reach people around you. If you're scared to share Jesus with them, that means you're not convinced about the well on your inside. 
Because it can be true kindness. It can be true a word of prayer. Sometimes we do this, I'm going to pray for you, and we'll never really pray for the person. Why don't you just pray for the person there? If it's appropriate, don't get fired trying to pray for someone. <laughs> but if it's appropriate. And let me tell you something. I learned something this week. I was out for a bit this, this week. And I'm, I'm reading this book, and it says the anointing is transferable. Jesus' hem, his clothing had so much anointing, the woman touched it and became healed. The Bible said they brought people, sick people, to come and touch the clothes of Jesus. Handkerchiefs were taken out of people, uh, out of Paul, to, to, to heal people. That means the anointing can be transferred on things. So you know what? You can actually go early to your office, lay hands on your desk, and transfer the anointing to your desk. Or on your file, your boss has been recalcitrant, and you lay hands and say, Father, I pray for peace over this file as I give it to this boss the peace on this file he's going to get it it's possible but we have to find ways find ways to keep extending the water that we have to those in our community our, our neighbor two doors down is not doing very well he's been unconscious for a bit we've made it our responsibility to ask how are you doing Play with, have twins, beautiful girls, play with them, pray with them, whatever. Find a way to be life. Don't just get so busy that you can't look around to see those who are in need. And some of the most needy, the, mo the people that need the most might be the person sitting beside you. Have you noticed that they've worn the same shoe for the past year? Have you noticed that they've worn the same two shirts they've been rooted? Have you noticed? Look around you. And see the need around you. Because we must remain connected to the community. Everybody say, we... Must remain connected to the community. Number two, we must go after death and deficiency. We must go after death and deficiency. The Bible says in Ezekiel 47 verse 8, And he, this angel, said to Ezekiel, This water flows towards the eastern region. Then it goes down into the valley. That word there, Araba, means a desert. It means a wilderness. And then it enters into the sea. The sea there is actually the Dead Sea. And because it enters into the Dead Sea, it heals the waters of the Dead Sea. So the Dead Sea is this sea that has no outlet. The Dead Sea is so salty that nothing can grow in it and around it. It's dead. That's why it's called the Dead Sea. Nothing lives there. And the Bible says this water that is flowing from the temple is looking for death. It's looking for deficiency, and it gets to the valley. A valley is a gulf. A valley is a place where it has been scooped up. It's lacking of land, and it first of all flows. It doesn't go to where there's, no, 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 that's good. I'm happy that you're doing well. I'm happy that you have joy. I'm happy that you have peace. But let me look for some anxious people, for some depressed people, because I want to feel the valley first, looking for the deficiency in marriages, looking for the deficiency spiritually, looking for the deficiency emotionally, physically. Those who are physically ill, we are looking for the deficiency. This river seeks out deficiency. Where is there lack? Where is there a gap between expectation and reality? Where is there a gap between the promise of God and what they are living now? Let's fill that void. Where is there a gap between what school is supposed to look like for a 12-year-old and what that 12-year-old is experiencing now? Where is there a gap between what your marriage is supposed to look like and what it looks like now? Where is the gap? Because that's what we're targeting. That's what we're looking for. Where is the gap? Where is the gap? Because we have to be just here, just coming to me now. We have to be in elderly homes. Why don't we stream our service for them? Why don't we stream our service in prisons? Why don't we give hope to where there is deficiency? We have to consistently look for where there is lack. It doesn't always have to be financial lack. It can be spiritual. That's why we have worship nights. That's why we go out there. And we, and we worship and we create a spiritual environment where people can be healed, where people can encounter God. The target of this river is dead and deficient places. We cannot turn a blind eye to anxiety, to depression. We cannot turn a blind eye to the divorce rate, rising divorce rates and marital challenges. We cannot turn a blind eye to those who don't have a thriving relationship with God. You cannot turn a blind eye to your co-worker that doesn't know Jesus. You cannot. We cannot afford to turn a blind eye to those who are in need. We cannot afford to let this river just sit around the church. If you notice, the river got deeper as it went away from the temple. Yeah. 
That means our deepest expression is not supposed to be here. Our deepest expression is supposed to be there. The biggest move of God is not supposed to be in this building. The biggest move of God is supposed to be in your office. The biggest move of God is supposed to be in your homes. It got deeper as it went away. That's the river. We think here is the most spiritual and we get our high here and then it, 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 it ends as we go out. On Wednesday, I've lost everything I got on Sunday. That means you do not get the point of Sunday because the point of Sunday was not to give you a high. The point of Sunday was to activate the well on the inside of you so that the river flows out of you consistently throughout the week. Because even on Friday, the power that you exude on Friday should be more than the power you exude on Monday. Because the further it went away from the temple, the deeper it got. Do you understand? Let's reframe our minds. I can't just wait to get to Sunday because no, 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 no. Saturday should be like the most impacts you have. We cannot afford to turn a blind eye. We exist to invite people to encounter God. We exist to invite people. You reach out to them, you talk to them. That's why you get an invite card every week. I know your car right now is filled with invite cards. I know. And we don't mind spending that money until the day. There's so many invite cards in your card, you actually give one to somebody. But seriously, we have to get passionate and committed to inviting people. And I don't mean just inviting them to church. Church is just like a muster point. When there's an emergency, just a muster point where everybody gathers. That's what the well is. That's what the well church is. You're inviting them to the easiest way they can encounter God. That's not the only way. You can actually facilitate it for them there. But we have to be passionate about inviting people. The Bible says... Wherever, verse 9, every living thing that moves, wherever the river goes, will live. That means if we want it to live, we must go there. We cannot be among the people that complains about the state of our community. We cannot be among the people that complains about the state of our state, our nation, our region. We cannot be. Why? If it is dead and deficient, that means we've not gone there yet. Or those who are there don't know why they are there in the first place. Because the Bible says, wherever this river goes, there will be life. If there's any death, any deficiency in your office, it's an assignment for you to make sure that you release this river of life. I'm talking in metaphors. I want to be as practical as possible. What does it look like? Show the love of God. Be patient. Most of you, all you need to do is just to be kind. Just don't be short and cut and if you stomp on my feet, I will punch you in the face. Of... <laughs> Jesus whipped people one time. You know, most of us are daily whipping people. No, like, just be nice. Be excellent at your job. So if you just need to go to work on time, that will be all the weakness you need to do. <laughs> just go to work on time. Just show up for the Zoom meeting by 9, like it says on your calendar. Not 9.01, not 9.03, not, oh my God, I'm so sorry I wasn't. You are at home. Why, don't, why are you late? <laughs> you're not even wearing pants. Today. I know you're not wearing pants. Some of us, that's just the best. We just come early. By 8.59, you're waiting for your boss. Like, man, I really like the way you are. What's there? Just God, man. God really helps. The wisdom of God, the peace. Of, wow, that's good. You understand what I mean? That's some of us, just as practical as that. Some of us, just be nice. Somebody's being really, really rude, really, really nasty. And all you do is just be nice. Or you just show love. Or you just have peace in two more days. Oh, we're, we're, we're cutting down, we're downsizing. And somebody just sees you smile. Why are you smiling? Did you hear what I just said? I heard what you said, but there's something I know. There's somebody I know who takes care of me. No matter what this outcome is, I'm going to be fine. And they want to find out. Why would you see this confidence? You understand? That's a river. Some of us just have to pray. Pray for your co-workers. Pray for your neighbors. That's a stream coming out of you. Pray for them. Pray for your family members. Your uncle that you don't like, pray for them. Your mom that you're struggling with, pray for them. Just release a river from your well to them. 
We must stay connected to the community. We must go after death and efficiency. And number three, we must go again. That whole scripture, this man comes out and the Bible says in, in, in verse three, and when this man went out to the east with the light in his hand, he measured 1,000 cubits and he brought me out through the waters and the waters came up to my ankle. Again, he measured 1,000, brought me to the waters. It went through my knee to my knees. Again, he measured 1,000 and brought me to the water and he came to my waist. Again, he measured a thousand and he brought me through the river and I could not cross the river. The river, the water was too deep. It was one that could be, had to be, someone was swimming. And I looked at these verses and I kept looking at them and one word just kept coming up. In case you were wondering what the title of this message is, it's again, again. We are going to do it Again, next year, we're going to do it again. We're going to do worship nights again. We're going to do Sunday services again. We're going to do Wednesday Bible study again. Next week, we're going to minister to the lost. Next week, we're going to minister to those who don't know Jesus. We're going to minister to students. We're going to minister to children. We're going to do what we did this year. We're going to do it again. But Pastor Victor, what's going to be the difference is going to be deeper. We're going to love deeper. We're going to love more. We're going to love serve bigger. We're going to do everything with more conviction but we're going to do it again you're going to get another chance to talk to your co-worker again the last time you talked to them you had a nasty attitude so you didn't really represent Jesus so God is going to measure a thousand and give you another opportunity to try again to, to try again let's see if you get it right this time we're going to do everything again but deeper with more conviction better bigger we're going to fill up Laurel High School this time and there's going to be pressure on us to go to somewhere bigger. We're going to do it again. We're going to fill up this auditorium and go to two services. Again. We're going to do it again. We're going to serve 5,000 kids again. We're going to do it again. That's all we're going to do. We're just going to do it again. But this time we're going to ask God, measure 1,000. Trust us with 1,000 souls. Trust us one more time. We, we, we messed up doing welcome holders. A whole 500 people we could have reached. We are sorry for that. But just measure, measure 500 again. And give us an opportunity at those 500 people. And we promise we will get to them. We will bring them to Jesus. Turn to your and say, we're going to do it again. We're going to invite them again. We're going to serve them again. We're going to disciple them again. We're going to develop them again. We're going to deploy them again. We are going to do it all over again until there is no anxiety in our community, until there is no depression, until all the marriages are doing well, until there is peace and hopes, until everybody has joy. We are going to do it again. We're going to do it again. What are we going to do again? Let me give you some vision for next year. Local missions, we are committed to Rockville, to Montgomery County. We're committed to the DMV. If you know we're looking for a space in Rockville, believe me, I have seen spaces in non-Rockville places. <laughs> but until God says otherwise, we're committed to Rockville. We're committed to Twinbrook Elementary, committed to Veers Mills Elementary, committed to Interfaith, all the different um, expressions they have of that. We're committed to the food truck and the apartments. We're committed to all the organizations that we partner with, all the schools, all the teachers, everyone that we've partnered with, we're going to do it again with them. We're not going to be that church that just appears for one year and then de disappears. No, we're going to be a part of the community. They can make their budget with us in mind. They can make their budget allocations with us in mind because we're going to keep showing up in deeper expressions. You can celebrate that if you want to celebrate that. And our team is vetting more opportunities, more opportunities that we can serve with. Number two, national missions. I believe, I am Pastor Ambi, strongly believe, strongly convinced that the local church is the hope of the world. And what do I mean? If God wants to change a community, all he does is introduce a church. So we're going to keep partnering with church planting organizations, especially ARC, the Association of Re 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 Related Churches. We're going to partner with them. This year we planted 47 churches, altogether about a thousand plus churches all around the world. But we're going to keep supporting that. And then our own individual efforts, we're going to keep supporting families that are planting, churches that are looking for buildings, churches that are just planted. 
We're going to keep supporting them. This year, I actually want to, we're, actually, we're playing around with the idea. We'd like to give surprise Christmas blessings to some pastors in the area. Pastors that have given everything to planting a church. It is not easy. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me make it make sense. It's not easy to plant a church. It can take a toll on your family. I know pastors, that their money and the church money, there's no line. They sacrifice literally everything. We'd like to just give them enough money to just have a good Christmas. Buy some gifts for the kids. Just something very practical. Most of you are not clapping and that's because you have everything. You know what I mean? I get it. You don't understand what I'm saying. But there are pastors all over the world that cannot buy a simple toy for their kid. We'd like to make that possible. So we want to keep supporting local churches. We want to keep supporting local church planters. We like to keep blessing pastors in the area. That's going to be a major expression of what we do nationally. Internationally, we want to keep sending um, financial support to. Uh, we sent a substantial amount of money um, to a ministry in the sub-Saharan part of Africa. I want to keep doing things like that. Everything I'm saying depends on what comes in. I am Pastor Ambi can have vision for days, but it can only go as fast as your sacrifice, as fast as your commitment. As fast as, as fast as your g- generosity. So we're going to do that, keep supporting ministries that are serving the less served people. But there's this organization that just came to mind, um, Foot Rock. Organi- Foot Rock is an organization that caters, um, provides rest for international ministry leaders, Spanish-speaking pastors especially, and missionaries with the goal of alleviating vocational burnout through global retreats, coaching and curated experiences. Let me make that make sense. Pastors quit on Mondays. Mondays are the days pastors quit because of disappointment. Because people did not show up, people did not give, people did not do what they were, and there's burnout. 51% of pastors, when they were told, said they would do something else if they had the chance. If we start losing pastors, we're going to start losing churches. If we lose churches, we're going to lose the light in our communities. And we're going to do our best to make sure that doesn't happen around us. So we're going to support this this organization. Um, It takes about 4,000 to sponsor six pastors from any Spanish-speaking country. They've done 50 pastors so far from 27 countries. Just bring them together and just provide them place to rest. I was at a retreat. God opened my eye Monday to Thursday. I was at a retreat with some men, wonderful men that I met. And by the time we got to Tuesday, Wednesday, each and every one of them, except your pastor, who is a G, by the way. (laughs) I need to be serious with my life. Uh, Each and every one of them had broken down and cried at the most unexpected times. Like talking about the most unusual things. And you wonder why were they crying at that point? They just became, it it became too much. And just imagine pastoring with that pressure. Trying to care for people with that pressure. We're going to do our bit to sponsor as many retreats as we can to make sure that those churches are alive. That those pastors are doing well. That's the heart. That's one of the visions that we have. And finally, the well church. The offering that we're going to receive today and over the next six months is going to go towards making us stronger. First of all, um, we're going to hire some more people. Up until this point, only I and Pastor Ambi are the staff of the well. You people are a lot of people, you know what I'm trying to say? <laughs> this is a lot of people to pastor. Uh, but God has been wonderful. And why has that been possible? We have an incredible dream team. Put your hands together and celebrate the dream team. We have an incredible dream team. That makes it easy to lead, to pastor, to care for. But we're getting to the point where we need to hire more people. So we're going to hire more people. You're going to see more people come on staff full-time, part-time. If you feel God has called you to ministry and you can do the job, when the postings go up, listen to me, and you can do the job. And you can do the job. We're going to hire some people full-time, part-time. And then secondary, secondly, we're going to expand our, our ability to have services here. And this is what I mean. We need more kids' space, um, more things, just more, because we're growing. When we got the trailer and the gear that we have now, we were 
we are very much less than what we are now, and now I'm more. Um, but right now, we have a U-Haul that has all kinds of things packed in it, and you can pack a U-Haul nicely, like a, a van, and just go over one bump, and everything you did just, <laughs> it collapses. So I have to get a new trailer with cases that makes it easy. If you come out here by 7 a.m., 8 a.m., you know how important it is for everything to be as easy as possible. So we're going to get some money into funding another trailer with cases just to make it easy. Yeah, Dream Team, you can, you can celebrate. They don't understand, but you can celebrate. You can celebrate that. And then finally, we're going to just keep putting money away for um, when God does the miracle and we have our space want to be able to have substantial amount of money put down there. Uh, we are doing very well. None of this, this offering is not because we're in financial distress. We are good. Last year, we wanted to do this, and God said, don't do it. Wait until next year. And we're here now at next year. And, and I don't just want to ask you to give. I want you to watch the screen for the story of impact. This is a family that joined this church this year, moved into the community last year, found the World Church, joined the World Church, and it has radically changed their lives. If you don't mind, just pay attention to the screen. We got here actually in November. January, we had been looking for a church. So there was actually two churches that popped up when I said churches near me, right? And I went through the Wells page and then I also went through the other churches page. And no lie, I said, I have to be here. Something says I have to be here today. We, we get there and um, get in the parking lot. It's like, hey fam, what's up? And I was like, hey, what's up? You know, and walking through the door and then it was like, hey bro, what good? I'm like, all right, I'm, 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 I'm hyped now for church. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, and it just kept going, it just kept going, and everyone seemed so loving and, and he happy and, and ready to help. Literally everything that I needed in that moment and where I was in life was there. I went down to altar call and someone did pray for me. But as I was coming back up the aisle, Holy Spirit told me, turn around. Turn around and have her pray for you. And I went straight to Pastor Envy, and she prayed for me. And my my relationship with not only the well with her with everything has evolved since that day me submitting to god and being able to fully submit to him and give my life back to him again when i did the baptism with my children which was the most amazing day i did not realize that my kids yearned for a relationship with christ that much that even though they weren't signed up they was like mommy i'm doing this my my family as a whole has cultivated into this we want god we want the spirit we the spirit of god to live and reside in this house and then worship night Worship night, I said, uh, the next worship night, I gotta drink water for like the first couple uh, days before that because I was dehydrated afterwards, <laughs> but I loved it. It was the best feeling I ever had. Um, I can't explain it, yeah. but I was able to release. I was able to to accept, to see, um, to claim. It was just, it was amazing. Freedom is a small group that uh, I joined. Um, God, if I can go through freedom all over again, I will. Every time they have freedom going, you, that was that was remarkable. It was. Um, I learned so much about myself. It was me, and I had to fix me. In freedom, I realized I could forgive everybody and everybody. It doesn't matter what they do, but I never was able to forgive me. And despite this man loving me beyond what I could see, he saw this. He always sees this beauty, this radiance, and stuff like that. He loved me beyond myself and. My worth was a lot to him, but I couldn't see it. Freedom allowed me to see my worth. Freedom allowed me to see that um, you can forgive yourself. Don't hold that burden. That burden is not yours to hold. God forgave you. You just gotta learn how to forgive yourself. Communication is something that we were never being able to, do, well, never able to do because of all the resentment and things of the past that we were never able to talk about. Um, the well has allowed us to be open to one another, even with freedom. The resentment and stuff that I've had from the, the future, I mean, from the past, now no longer exists in the future with the both of us. And it's kind of 
I don't know, it allowed us to like, I just want to be in his face and just kiss his face. You know, now it's just like, I just want to be all over him all the time and be in his presence. And it's like, I miss him. I'm longing for him and stuff like that. But um, on a more serious note, I will say the well has taught me to fully submit not only to him, but it also taught me to um, trust in that God told me, I gave you this man. You're telling me that what I gave you and that is of me, you don't trust. He basically told me like, you can trust him. He's there. I put him there for you. The well will change your life. I promise you it will. Yes. Like I said, we done went through uh, a, a season where it's like, hey, I thought I could do it by myself, right? Yes. And for a long time, I, I did. But yeah. you slowly get to that point where you're like, okay, I need something. I need somebody. I need somebody to lean on. Yeah. And God is that person. He's that, he's that being. He's that thing. He is, I mm -hmm. am. Coming to the well, I promise you, you won't be disappointed. Mm -hmm. like I done changed the music I listen to, yeah. how I dress, the, the, how I think. Me and my kids being they singing along to Ryan O'Fay. Like, we, mm -hmm. we be in there. So I'm mm -hmm. telling you, it will definitely change your life. Just come on.